Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to find the zeros and to give the multiplicity of each zero of the following function, 4x raised to the fourth multiplied by 9x raised to the fourth minus 12x raised to the third plus 4x raised to the second. The first thing we have to do is, I think it would be best if we find the zeros. And how we find the zeros, remember zeros is just another, another word for finding the x-intercepts. I have several videos out there, by the way, you know, maybe 20 or so, explaining in excruciating detail how to approach finding zeros or x-intercepts. Check out this playlist on our channel and look for the x-intercept uh, videos, basically, if you want to learn a little more. I'm going to run through it a little bit faster here um, just because I want to try to get to more problems for you guys. So um, what we have to do first to find the zeros, we've got to make sure that this is fully factored. Now, I realize that this here is not fully factored. So that's what I'm going to focus on first. All right, so I got 4x raised to the fourth. And then I realize that in each of these terms, I can pull out a common x squared, right? The values 9, 12, and 4 do not have anything in common, whole numbers that are in common. And therefore, uh, I can only pull out an x squared, all right? So let me actually make a bracket here. I'm going to do x squared. I'm going to pull that out, okay? And then you divide each of these basically by x squared to find then what's remaining. So when you divide the first term by x squared, you're going to get 9 x to the second, right? The second term, when you divide it by x squared, it's going to be 12x to the first. And then this last term, the x squares would just cancel, right, leaving a value of 1 there. But the 4, right, would be 1 times 4, which is just 4. All right. Now what I realize is that basically these two terms are multiplied together, right? The 4x raised to the fourth and the x squared. So wait a minute, can I combine them? Sure you can, right? This would be 4x to the sixth. Parenthesis now, 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Okay. Now, from here, what we want to do is we realize that we have one factor here, but this is not fully factored yet. Now, this looks like a quadratic, and you're thinking, oh, no, this doesn't have a coefficient of 1 here in the front. This gets a little harder. Okay? The way to do this is the following. What you're going to do is you know, you know what you're looking for, right? You're looking for two binomials with values here, 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 and here, okay? To find the beginning, to find the first value of the binomial, what you're going to do is you're going to take your coefficient and the highest exponent and just square root it. When you square root that, right, 9 becomes a 3, and the x squared becomes an x. And guess what? That's going to be the value, 3x, all right, on both sides. Because if you think about foiling it, meaning if you think about going backwards now, what's 3x times 3x? Well, it's 9x squared. All right, so that's how we arrive at that. Now, the next thing is you want to think of two values now that multiply to be positive 4. You might say, oh, great, 2 and 2. Well, that's true, but also 4 and 1, right? And not only positive, but also negative. So you really have four different types now. You have a positive 4 and a positive 1. You have a negative 4 and a negative 1. You have a positive 2 and a positive 2. And you had a negative 2 and a negative 2, Okay. All of these will multiply to give you a positive 4. But now you might say, oh, oh, all right, and why shouldn't we just find out the values that add up to be negative 12? Well, if you look here, do any of those sets add up to negative 12? No, they don't, right? But what I do know now is that, well, the when I add some of the terms, they got to be negative. So guess what? I'll see you later all the positives, okay? So now I'm down to a 50-50. Now from here, honestly, just make a, just make a guess, okay? Just make a guess. So plug in now, let's say negative 2 and negative 2. So we, we actually know the signs now, right? They have to be negative. So you can just go back there, erase them, and plug in the negative. And just plug in a 2 there and a 2 here. Now this might work. It might not work. But it you know if it doesn't work, guess what your answer is going to be? The negative 4 and negative 1. All right, so what I suggest now is you now work backwards. You foil this. So 3x times 3x would have been your 9x squared. Your 3x times your negative 2 would have been your negative 6x. Your negative 2 times your 3x would have been negative 6x again. And then your negative 2 times a negative 2 would have been your positive 4. And if you realize when you combine these two terms, when you add them together, it should be negative 12x. Oh, and that's what's here. So you're good. Now, if that didn't work out, you wouldn't have to really redo it again. I mean, maybe you should, but you would just plug in these values now, okay, instead of the negative 2 and the negative 2. But that's all it is. Okay, so that's how you're going to go about doing something like that. Now, what I'm going to do to highlight now the multiplicity is that I'm going to combine these two, all right, under one power. And the reason why is because actually the powers tell us the multiplicities. All right, the power of each factor there basically tells us the multiplicity. 
So from here, I know my multiplicity is going to be six for that one and two for this one, but let's first find those zeros again and then we'll list the multiplicity. So from here, what I'm going to do is set each of these equal to zero because that's what we have to do when we solve uh, for the zeros or the x-intercepts. Why do we do that? Check out the links in the description below Okay, to that playlist. That will help out tremendously. Now, it turns out you don't really need to add the squares or the, the six power there, but I'm going to do it anyway. Now, in order to get rid of, you know, the first thing is you can divide by four if you like, right? You can divide by four. That's all fine and dandy. So when you do that, it's going to be x raised to the sixth power is equal to zero because zero divided by four is just zero. And then when you take the sixth root, okay, of both sides, the sixth root of zero is just zero. So it really, you don't even need the exponent there, okay? So x is just going to be equal to zero. So that's going to be one of the zeros. I know this is confusing because of the language. But this is going to be the value of x where the function's value is equal to zero, or the y value is equal to zero. Or in other words, this is the x value of the x-intercept, one of the x-intercepts. Now we're going to do the same thing on over here, right? You're going to square root both sides, and when you square root zero, it's still going to be zero. So you got 3x minus 2 is equal to zero. And then you're going to divide each, uh, not divide yet, but add 2 to each side, right? So we're going to add 2 to each side, so you're going to get 3x is equal to 2. Divide the 3 on both sides, and you're going to x is equal to 2 thirds. Now that is another zero, okay? So again, so if you wanted to check yourself, what you can do is you can take these values of x, plug it into this function, and just see if the whole thing works out to be zero. And what should happen is it will, all right? So now, what's the multiplicity of this x, right, of, of this zero in particular? Well, you got to go back and figure out where that came from, what factor it came from, and whatever the power is, is equal to its multiplicity. That's the nice part. So it's just six, right? Multiplicity is going to be equal to six. In the second one, the power was a two. So the multiplicity here for that zero is going to be two. And now you're done. I mean, the, the, these are the answers, okay? If you want to gain a little bit of a visual understanding, though, you should graph it. So you go to four. So graph your function, four x raised to the fourth, okay? Uh, don't do that. You got to come down, okay? Bring that down. Open the parentheses. Then it's going to be nine x raised to the fourth, Okay, bring it down, minus 12x raised to the third, right? Raised to the third, and then plus 4x squared. I'm just going to double check myself. So 4x to the fourth, 9x to the fourth. Okay, great, minus 12x. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to go to zoom, and I'm going to go to number two. I'm going to zoom in because I already realized that my x value, right, this is zero, and that's going to be two-thirds. So all the actions happen, uh, you know, very close to the center. And uh, and here, maybe we'll zoom in again because this this is this is not going to give us enough detail to kind of really see what's going on. So let's zoom in again and let's hit two and we'll hit enter. And it's a little bit tough to kind of see now, but it's not the best frame. But you can almost tell. So basically, what's happening here is that you definitely can see the function. It's very close to you know zero. It actually is. It's not it's not crossing the x-axis here. It's not going down. It's actually coming down, touching, and bouncing off. You can kind of see it coming up there a little bit, okay? Whenever you have even multiplicities, you always get bounces. So if you notice at the x value of 0, it's an even multiplicity, so we should get a little bounce. And we don't even really see that other value out there, right? I mean, we don't even see the other place where it's going to in, uh, touch that x-axis. But since we know it's an even multiplicity again... It's going to just touch it and then come back up, all right? And if we zoom out here, if you go to just zoom standard, you can kind of see that eventually it just goes back up. So what's going to happen is the function comes back down, and then it's just going to go back up again, all right? So anytime you have even multiplicities, that's the case. And if you want to know why even multiplicities produce such behavior and odd multiplicities will produce other behavior, I have a video on that. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you're curious and you really want to understand why, I highly suggest you check it out, all right? Um, because it will make this make sense. I mean, you can memorize all this stuff. That's great. But if you understand it, uh, if the problem changes then, if the problem gets a little harder, you're not going to be lost, all right? I don't like to memorize too many things. Some things you do have to memorize. But you really want to do a ton of practice, understand the patterns of what's going on. And I promise then on the test, you're going to do great. All right. And that's what we have. We have a whole channel dedicated to helping you practice. We have thousands of videos out there. All right. Not only mathematics, but chemistry and physics as well, explaining in detail how to approach problems. OK, uh, because quite honestly, what are you going to see on your test? Problems. All right. So that's what we want to do. We want to help you check out our channel. 
Thank you so much for your support. If you can, like and subscribe, and also maybe even tell some of your classmates. All right, we really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.